In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a statement of cash flows. Time to engage with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Bellwether Garden Supply practice file. We're over here in the uh, customers and sales section. We're going to go to the reports now, go into the reports and forms. We're going to go down to those financial statements. We're going to be considering the statement of cash flows, which is one of the major financial statements. However, you will typically be working as you enter data with the balance sheet and uh, the income statement. And then we're going to take a look at the other financial statement, which you probably don't open all the time up as you enter the data input process. So that's gonna be the cash flow. So we're gonna have the standard cash flow statement as we've seen with the other reports. This is gonna be the standard report, kind of the out of the box report as they call it. Has the cash receipts, cash payments, and changes in cash over a specified time. So let's open that up. We're gonna open up that one. We have the current period, same kind of options on the drop down range or the current three periods. We're gonna be in the current period. I don't need the page numbers. I don't wanna show the zero balances. The zero balances could be good if you need to go in there especially when you're using that quick zoom feature but we don't need them here print all words in capitals no and I, I, you could put them in capitals but I'm not going to here and then center the page and then you've got your margins so I'm going to go ahead and open this up then there we have it and we have the, the basic setup for our statement of cash flow so notice the statement of cash flows is going to be basically a timing type of statement it's going to be focusing in on the cash flows remember that uh, most of the time the financial statements are going to be on an accrual basis which is best for the matching principle if we're trying to measure performance from one period to another period however also nice to see the cash flow information so cash flow information we got the cash flow by month and we have the cash flow by year we have the three sections of the cash flow that being the operating section and then the uh, financing section and the investment section nothing in the investment section and the financing section and then we have the tie out or the reconciliation with the cash account which is going to be on uh, the balance sheet notice that this is the indirect method so we are using the indirect method which does provide us with that reconciliation between the net income and the net cash provided by operations so let's just give a quick recap of the statement of cash flows and then we'll, we'll print this out in order to do so let's open up our other two financial statement reports that being the balance sheet and the income statement so i'm going to open up the standard balance sheet here current period I'm going to keep those default settings that's the one we want so there is our balance sheet I'm going to then open up the income statements i'm going to come on down to the income statement I'm going to open that up i'm going to remove the the zero here and i don't need the page there and i'm going to say okay and there we have it now remember the income statement is going to be on an accrual basis that's going to be best for the matching principle however it would be nice if we could kind of see the income statement on a cash basis a cash flow basis as well two ways you can do that you could consider taking the income statement and adjusting each line to a cash basis by basically converting each line to a cash that would be a direct method for the statement of cash flows or you can use the indirect method which basically means you're going to take the net income down below and you're going to be converting it back to the uh, a cash flow basis reconciling between the two starting with a net income reconciling out to the cash basis that's often preferred or necessary whether you use the direct method or not the reason is because it gives you that reconciliation so the direct method kind of makes more sense because you can you can see the income statement and you're just saying hey this is the income statement on a cash flow basis but it doesn't actually reconcile the differences between the net income and uh, the statement of cash flows the way the indirect method does so so that's the 21 925 then <clears throat> if we go back on over to the statement of cash flows we have the statement of cash flows here the 21 925 being our net income starting point for the year-to-date numbers and then we have our adjustments for the indirect method and that gives us to the net cash provided by operations so in other words, you can kind of think of the operating section as kind of like the income statement, like the bottom line is the net income number in a, in a sense of the income statement on basically a cash basis, that being the net cash provided by operations. Then you're going to have the cash flows from investing, nothing included at this point in time here. That might be something like uh, if we put money into equipment or invested in equipment, cash flow went out, but it's not something that would affect the income statement. And therefore, it would be on uh, the investment activities. And then the financing activities, if we had financing like loans or equity type of activity, then that would be the financing activities. That then gives us the change in the cash. So the change in the cash is, cash is nice, but we want to be able to tie it out to the financial statements. To do so, then 
we want to be taking that change in cash and, and, and adjusting it or taking a look at it as compared to the beginning balance so that we can then get to the ending balance in cash. In other words, the cash at the end of the year is the 39,256. Uh, uh, cash balance at the beginning of the year is this, and that gives us uh, our 42,132. Uh, if we then go take a look at our uh, balance sheet, then the balance sheet up top, and if we were to add up the cash accounts, so I'm gonna say, all right, here's our cash accounts. Let's pull out the trusty calculator. I'm not gonna add the penny, so I'm not gonna be exact here. So it's gonna be three, seven, six, plus the one, eight, five, zero, plus the two, five, eight, one, eight, plus three, seven, one, one, plus seven, five, zero, zero. That brings us down to the savings account, not including the, we stopped before we got to the accounts payable, 39, 255 rounded. And so then if I go to the statement of cash flows, we have the what did we have here the 39,255. so that's this number here uh the ending balance again it's rounded on the calculator i didn't include the pennies so that's just uh so we then tie out to the balance sheet that's going to be the basic overview of the statement of cash flows let's go ahead and print this out same kind of options we have with the other statements you can adjust the options that we had when we came in with the options button here you can use the design function you can use the advanced integration fun functions if you want to have the add on to it then we can display it by printing it as a PDF or sending it to the PDF using the cute PDF printer to print it as a PDF or print it from here or export it to Excel. And we'll practice that as well because there's there's some tools that we can use within Excel to help us to collate these reports as well as give them to somebody in uh, one PDF file. So let's go through our process. We're going to print it then. Let's go to the printing options. We're going to print it to the cute PDF printer, practicing using the cute PDF printer. The cute PDF printer is a free uh, printer option. It's been useful for me. I think it would be useful to, to have um, and uh, it's, a, it's a free option. So I'm going to go in then to section two and I'm going to put this in our financial statement folder where we have the balance sheet and the income statement. I'm going to put this one there too now, saving that. Then I'm going to export it to Excel. I'm going to export it to that worksheet that we already had. So I'm going to go to add new worksheet in an existing workbook. So existing workbook is just going to put a new worksheet, which means like a new tab into the workbook that we already have set up it's going to be picking up this one so i'm just going to double check that that's the one we want i've got the settings the way the settings i want the settings so we're then going to export this this then of course should be opening up excel should be putting the new tab in it note again this isn't an add-on feature this is the kind of the normal process that we can then go into an excel and adjust the information within excel if we so choose in any kind of format we want however it's not going to save that, that those adjustments to the report. So next time we then export it, we would have to make them again. So here is our adjustment. If we go into the layout tab, then we have our header up top. So that looks good. So everything looks good here. If we wanted to make any adjustments, we could do so in Excel. Then if we wanted to provide these reports to somebody else, we can print all three reports. We can collate them by just printing them out of this one Excel document or we can print them to a PDF file so that we can have one PDF file with the three um, documents within it. Let's do that with the help and use of the cute PDF printer. So we're gonna go to the file dropdown. We're gonna go on down to the print and then we are going to be printing using the cute PDF printer. And we, we need to change this, this is the key, the print active sheet to the entire workbook. So now we're gonna print the entire workbook consisting of the seven pages has the balance sheet income statement and now the statement of cash flows. Let's go ahead and print that now. We're gonna be printing that using the cute PDF printer. It's gonna ask us where do we wanna put it. We're gonna put it and just overwrite the financial statement we did last time because now we made an adjustment to it. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put this into my folder here and I'm gonna say, I wanna overwrite this financial statement. So it's gonna go right there, save that. And then I'm gonna close this back out and then I'm gonna save it before I do that. And then I'm going to minimize all the tabs to get to the desktop. So I'm gonna minimize all this stuff. And then I'm gonna open up our uh, folder here, which is still spelled wrong. It's probably, it's okay, it doesn't bother me at all. And then I'm gonna to go to the financial statements up top. We're gonna to right click on that. We could send this to a zipped file and then, uh, and then, and then attach that to an email. We can attach them individually. We can then print from the from the Excel file so it's all collated for us. That's a very useful thing. Oftentimes, if you're depending on the printer you're working on and how knowledge you are knowledgeable you are about how to, you know, do printer things with the printer. And then we have the PDF file 
which we can then use to, to give somebody with one attachment that would have all the reports on it. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.